Good. How have you been? Oh, hi, sweetheart. All right. How's everything been? I think your one of the big takeaways that we had last time was like working with her a little bit before going on a walk. Uh, we haven't done it quite the same way that you have because of our space is a little bit different, but we've been doing it in the house, and I think it's actually been oh, yeah. a really big help. Oh, perfect. She's, she's definitely staying more focused and engaged with us on walks and things like that, which is obviously what we want. Yeah. I think we've started to see pretty quick progress over the last, I don't know how long it's been. She's been all awesome. yeah. <laughs> she's, she's such a happy little girl. <laughs> What you doing, huh? We, one of the things that we did struggle, we have been struggling with though, is when we do have the ball with her and we're working on those kind of commands, trying to get her to drop it. You were struggling a little bit with her here. I have made zero progress. Oh no, right? okay. <laughs> like the treats, the ball is so much more compelling to her that she won't drop it like at all. And I just sit there and I feel like I just keep okay. repeating. So I don't know how to break that with her. Okay. But. She's been doing pretty well otherwise. Okay. Like Let's work on that then. And then I think um, <clears throat> we have a, another appointment next week because I think one of the big things for this time was to do another dog. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hi, sweet. Hi, sweet. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. The dog reactivity and stuff like that. We've been doing our own work with her, and yep. she's definitely getting better. We can tell that she's not as... <laughs> She doesn't lunge and lock in as much like across the street and things like that, but Good. she can still kind of do it. She's a little bit more challenging in the house, I'd say, oh. with dogs that are in the front yard or whatever that may be. But I'm assuming that might be somewhat of a territorial thing, maybe. Oh uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. If it's like window fighting or fence fighting, and she's is she hitting the fence line or something? So we have two dogs on either side of us and share fences. We don't take her out unless she's on leash. Oh, okay. Um, they will, they actually are the ones that come at her and then she'll respond. Okay. So we try to keep her away and she actually tends to do, I think she does quite well. Like she doesn't seem to be the instigator. Oh, good. But she will respond back. That makes it a little bit easier though. Not readily committing like that and just responding. Yeah. A little bit harder for you to time it out because you've got to wait for the dogs to do their thing to get, to tell her to don't want it. Yeah. So timing wise, it can be a little bit more con uh, precarious. But the fact that she's not the aggressor or patient zero in if that interaction. In the front yard, though, like just people walking by, she will occasionally growl and stuff like that. Okay. So that is more on her because I, I think the dog just the growl. don't know that she's there. Um, uh, she, yeah. In the past, she's lunged at the window, but now it's just growling. Okay. So Sometimes she will, if she's like on the couch um, and she sees somebody walking by with a dog, she darts right up to the window and then starts growling. Oh, okay. so I guess that's a, I guess a lunge in a way. A person or Not a dog? People, dogs. Dogs, only dogs. Yeah. Okay. And then the growl she is she it. She will run up to the window to, for a person, but then she just like sits there and wags her tail. It doesn't have an aggressive looking okay. effect. It's really more of the dog. Where it's How do you feel different. about that? Do you want that to go away or are you okay with it? With people? With the growl when, he sees, when she sees a dog outside. We would like to get rid of that okay. <laughs> if we can. Okay. So then the way you, if, if it's, I know it's been a while, but if you recall, one of the first reasons, one of the first challenges that we had with her, she did fight a dog. <laughs> so that had been our biggest challenge. And remind me of that snare because that was a long time ago. Long Help time me out. Ago. Yeah, we, we had it for two weeks. It was a friend's dog. We tried to do an introduction in the, like a neutral area. She was obviously very excited, which in retrospect wasn't the right thing to do. She went up and sniffed the dog and then just went for it. Went head tall and then went for it? Sorry? She come in, sniff the dog, head tall and go for it? Is she, um, she's like, did, she's she was about to play, like she came back up and then went She just got confused. The dog was sitting on the ground. It's a very, I would say, I mean, that, again, that could be, I probably said it the first time you mentioned it, it could be transitional. I rescue a lot of dogs from shelters and I see a lot of behaviors up front that after decompression start to dissipate. Yeah. Okay. So it could have been primarily new place, unfamiliar, hasn't assimilated, doesn't know you, doesn't know where they're at, yeah, <clears> and then a little overstimulated in that moment, and classic yeah. pity, bred for, bred for, to respond, bred for right. conflict. Because then I, that's when, the first time we came here, you brought your dogs out, and you, your commentary was that she was posturing. Yeah, threat she, detection. Right, I remember the that video. Could be a big, yeah. Um, 
be a threat to that other dog, which then gets into a misunderstanding. Of Correct. Yeah. Stiff postures. The thing about staffies and <laughs> these really stocky breeds is that they still exhibit a stiff posture with other dogs based on their stature. Yeah. When a if like my my golden retriever Gigi comes out, she'll she's stiff, but she's also this fluffy dog, right? And she's technically she is stiff but it doesn't look as much as every muscle fiber tense and stiff. And sometimes that can push a dog over or cause a misunderstanding. Yeah. Pity's, I think pity's more times than not, anytime a, a staffy, pity-esque dog got into a fight, I believe that a lot of them are misunderstandings because of the way that pity is presenting. <clears throat> or a lot, oftentimes a lot of them just rush into a situation and have no fucking plan as to what they're doing. They are just pursuant yeah. of yeah. the dog coming up on it and now they're at the dog's feet and then there's a misunderstanding right yeah. <clears throat> she clearly and i know it's part of the reason she goes balls to the wall with everything yeah like whatever she does yeah she's like, relatable yeah like, she's not scratching her ass and she's like and this and this and this <laughs> just, you know um so okay one other thing that we would like to look over and maybe it's just time is in the backyard we would love her to be off leash and even if the dogs come out on the other side like somehow have her under voice commands. Um, I think that might be just time. Like we have worked on it with like mat training and things like that, but just. Yeah, will she, will she call much. off of the fence line and go to the mat when they're barking? No. no. Will she, she when they're not out there? Like focus on that when it happens. Like, okay. Okay. Generally, uh, so one of the dogs will come out hard and bark. It's a German Shepherd mix. If we can keep her kind of calm and ignore after five to 10 seconds, that dog gives up and just wanders off and does his thing. Now, I still wouldn't want her to then start wandering around the other fence line because that could cause an issue. But after that, then we can sit in the yard with her and she, like, they, like, don't even know that they're there anymore. The other one's a poodle and that dog just incessantly barks until their owner comes in and takes care of them. And her responses are pretty consistent? She's more triggered by the, the poodle. Got it. Okay. Um, or she's she's tense when it comes up. No she'll even. Much. This has changed over time. She's okay now, I'd say. But within the first six months that we had her, we'd be sitting on the couch with her, and that poodle would bark at whatever, something in the front yard or what, whatever, for whatever reason. And she would have what looked like a melt. She would start having like this response, <laughs> pacing, panting, all that kind of stuff. Probably just stimulated. Uh, time, a lot of times when dogs are whining and pacing. We might interpret those whines as like anxiety. Oftentimes, it's almost just like the exhaust from a car when you rev the engine, but probably overstimulated and pacing, yeah. anticipatory kind of movements and sounds. Um, so you can redirect that. You can channel that. You know, when a dog is um, ramping, so to speak, um, you know, starting to get you know excited and their you know their little muscles are their neurons are firing. You know, they've got a little maybe tiny bit of adrenaline or excitement or whatever. There, it's still gas in the tank to get things accomplished, and you can channel it. She's going to ramp. She's moving. She wants to move. Let's move this way. So that's one way to work through some things and build this idea that I need you to disengage. I need you to come over here, take some distance, completely disengage. Uh, in terms of the backyard, <clears throat> there's a couple ways you can work it. You obviously want to get really solid with placements in the backyard. That needs to be a game that she absolutely loves. You want to leverage the stuff that she loves, like ball bring ball into place send so that she's having a good time yeah. and you want us to set a language that helps her place and down <clears throat> and you want to work it two ways. You want to go to that fence line and you want to use your body and move your body to send the place send from the fence line where the poodle is minus the poodle visually showing her. So here's the poodle side of the fence, my place send game. I'm actually on that fence and I'm place and I move my body a little bit more in a, an overt fashion and give a nice animated place in with my hand signal and I'm repping it. Come, good, place, all the way across the yard, yeah. downstays. <clears throat> what that'll do is when she's ramping at the fence line, you can walk over there and the game that she plays looks and sounds the exact same way and that animation in your body will help her out visually so you won't be left with just auditory. Dogs are visual, especially if she's ar, 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 she can't hear a fucking thing. What you do in terms of visual communication will be the most effective means of communicating to her. But putting it together, place, 
we'll build some solid breaking her off the place, the fence line, and going over there. Yeah, so there's working it because you're going to have this situation where she's going to hit that fence line. Even if I were to build a solid place in on the other side of the yard, it won't look and sound the same when she's hitting it from the adjacent side of the yard going crazy on the poodle. So that's where I say work your game where you need it in the counter conditioning, right? <clears throat> Is she going to guard it? Oh, no. I don't, I mean, she might just keep it in her mouth, if anything, but I don't think she guards it. If I, like, she, I don't think she'll lunge. Leave it. I would imagine l leveraging the ball in these games is going to have a really high rate of success. She is yeah. really ball obsessed. So I think that's where when we started when we walked in. It's if we can't get her to drop it effectively, then I don't know how to continue a training session with her. If I can't, if I can't use the ball to work with her when I can't get it from her, short of ripping it out. Yeah, we got to get the out solid. Yeah, so yeah. that means I think that's a little bit of a struggle because like when we go to the sniff spots, that's what I was trying to do with her is use the ball to help reinforce the commands her recall and all that kind of stuff but when i it takes me five minutes to get the ball from her it falls apart yeah let's build some let's build some success in the out get her outing loving to out and what you're going to do is you're going to use two identical balls <clears throat> hi sweetheart i'm not sick by the way i sound sick i just lost my voice in a webinar last night <laughs> Way too much talking. I brought my virtuals back, so I'm talking in the days a lot more. <clears throat> Hi. You excited? Take it. Good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Let me get some of my treats. Just keep it right there. Sorry, I'm just gonna. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> All right, so watch me. I'm low arousal. I'm on my knees to kind of bring the tempo down. I'm gonna deliver the ball in a low, exciting delivery, too. I can't, if I wanna teach you now, I can't be like, fucking go get it! Yeah. Now out, that's too much. She's going 60 miles an hour, so we wanna be five miles an hour with everything that we do. Even gesturing and giving her like a take it, out, take it, out, take it, out. So she starts to understand what out means okay. and what's in it for her if she outs. What's her name again? Indy. 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 Take it. Take it. Take it. Good. Indy, out. Good. All right. Yeah. Ready? Switch. 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 Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> She's a wrecking ball. So much for five, five miles an hour, huh? Did you get it? She's going to keep it in there. <laughs> All right. Let me switch it up. That's not working. Go ahead and let that go. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. 
Very good. Very good. Sit. Go, come. Go, sit. Go, spin. Sit. Go, come. Go, sit. Ready? Get. Oof. Very good. Very good. Wait for her to do her little rodeo. Very good. Very good. Good. Get that a girl. Good. Very good. Ready? Sit. Good. Get. Very good. Out. Good. Sit. It's a capture technique. She was going to out it then anyway, so I captured that moment and applied the out cue to it. Ready. Come. Sit. Control in between, though. Not ball, out, ball, out, game. Ball, out, game, ball, out. Come. Sit. So she's listening to me more readily. Get. <clears throat> Very good. Very good. Sit. Again, a capture technique. She was going to add it right there, timing it. Ready? Come. Sit. Spin. Sit. Come. Sit. Heel. Yeah, heel. Yeah, sit. Ready? Get it. Oh, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Very good. Very good. Very good. Go out. Very good. Sit. Come. Sit. Spin. Yeah. Come. Sit. Ready? Yeah. Good. Very good. Sit. Now my game and my delivery are competing with the value of gnawing. So if you are quiet, minimal, stoic, and the ball and the gnawing is really desirable for her because she's a pity, she wants to gnaw, then she's going to enjoy gnawing more so than the game. So you want to up the game and creating anticipation for the delivery really ups the fun of the game as well. It's what creates the dopamine response. So I'm creating a dopamine hit when I go, are you ready? You see that? Yeah. That's where the dopamine hit happens. And she and goes, she whoa, closing, shit, here we go. That's the dopamine hit. The anticipation of the reward is the dopamine, not reception. When she catches the ball, she's not catching dopamine. Moreover, the more she receives reward, that's where serotonin comes in and cools things off. Dopamine is unquenchable. Dopamine is rocket fuel. Serotonin is what douses the flames. So you really want to emphasize the delivery of it's coming. And you really want to make fun, make it fun too. Right? So even in my movement. We don't hear her make those noise with us. Yeah, it's a little bit of frustration and excitement. Ready? Come. Sit. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, spin, spin, sit, come, sit, ready. Get it. Oh, that's a good girl. 
That's a good girl. Very good. Very good. Spin. Sit. Come. Sit. Spin. Ready. Ah! Oh. Wow. Wow. What a good girl. What a good girl. <laughs> Is there, um, when you uh, uh, good. Well, I'm sorry. What? You have the two balls, right? She's chewing on one of them, and then you get that out. You continue to use that same one every time. So like the other one's like the lure. No, I'm using both. Yeah. Okay, it, really it's more of a, a apples to apples kind of thing. When we're talking about competing with the value of the ball, treats are doing it. Sometimes like, you can get a dog to out for treats yeah. and get the rep going that way. Um, but she's in a bit of a drive state. She's not taking treats. She's performative. So showing that the ball is here and the game will continue. And all you got to do is out it to get the game to continue. This is where we're playing. Okay. <clears throat> Hi. But she is chasing the – she is – we're talking about Pank Sec, the – Famous neurologist talked about like the seven systems in the brain. Some dogs chase the ball off the play system, and some dogs chase the ball off the prey system. This is prey. She's really going for the ball. It, at the same speed at which she would go after a squirrel or a cat. The hypothalamus circuits in the limbic system, the areas of the brain in charge of predatory sequences are activated. And sometimes with, especially with these types of breeds, it's a little harder for them to think and listen. So we have to practice that so that the frontal lobes are online, right? <clears throat> and she can hear you more readily. It's just practice that gets there. Okay. Regulation of it. Come, sit. Oh, yeah. Heel. Oh, yeah. Come, heel. Heel. Sit. Come, sit. Ready? Wow. Wow. Ouch. Good. Very good. Sit. Get it. Oof. Yeah. Ouch. 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 Good. Sit. Ready. Get it. Oof. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> wow. Ouch. 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 Very good. Very good. Come. Sit. Go ahead. Oof. Spin. Sit. Get it. Ah, it's a good girl. Ah, it's a good girl. Ah, it's a good girl. <laughs> To make you dizzy. Ah, 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 go, sit, go, come, go, sit. Ready? Get out! Oof! <clears throat> Thank you. What'd you do that time? She ran up to me and dropped it immediately. Uh. Ready? Come. Sit. Spin. Sit. Ready. Ah! Oh. Very good. Very good. Very good. Sit. Come. Sit. Spin. Come. Sit. Get her some water here in a second. But the only only dog that could overheat in the middle of winter, huh? <laughs>
<laughs> want to be very careful with her, especially. I almost had a fucking panic attack in that session that she was here. That's <sighs> oof. Very good. Good. I'm squeaking it to get her to, because she does that little do -si do thing. I want to shorten yeah. that a little bit. And I'm gesturing down and squeaking, showing her the ball to get her to come to my feet a little faster. Okay. So you can slowly get her to run up to your feet and just drop it with a little bit of, of help. But you can see how visually I'm helping her. Game's here. There's a sound happening. Game's here. She hasn't even gotten this ball. This is just a really obnoxious squeaker because <laughs> the other squeaker's out. <laughs> so I was over here. Squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Oof. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Ouch. Good. <clears throat> You're killing it. Get it. Now you can also incorporate a play send into that if you're trying to get play send solid in your backyard. <clears throat> and you can actually reset the game with play sends. Is that my car? <clears throat> so the game would start again once she places. And that can actually help out with some of this go-see-do. -si -do. Autumn, yeah. she's just mindlessly and wandering. <laughs> so you can tighten it up by resetting the game and her jumping onto place and laying down okay. <laughs> if you wanted to. But again, this is all about if she loves ball, then she has to work. She's got to. And it's just a game. The difference between work and a game is fun. So as long as you make it fun, it's never work. But she's got to put some work in to get to that ball. It can't be just a ball, ball of palooza because you miss out on an opportunity to get some solid yeah. behaviors accomplished. Place. Go to bed. That's usually what we kind of use. Place. Good. Very good. Good. Ready? Get it. <clears throat> Place. See? Ouch. Very good. Down. <clears throat> Whatever you want, you shall receive. It's a beautiful thing about drive. It's like having a, a lot of owners. My job in dog training is to typically deal with owners who have a dog that's a lot. A lot of drive, a lot of excitability. But the reality behind that is what that means is they spend a lifetime of putting that drive and that excitability into the environment, various triggers and reactivity and excessive barking, right? But it's just gas in the tank if you just channel it your way, right? She's a, she's a, <clears throat> she's a little Chevy Nova. She's got a nice engine to her. And obviously that can lose, you can lose control. Yeah. But if you continue to practice and get your power steering, she's yeah. a wonderful vehicle. She's a weekend warrior. I wasn't saying you are a Chevy Nova because of your size, but I was thinking wide body vehicles. Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> good. Let's see if she'll take treats. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even lucky. Let's get some. Ah! Please. Yeah. Down. Good, come. Switch. Get it. Uh, very good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Place. 
Good. Ah. Ah. Good. Down. Pretty good. This. Ah. Place. Down. <clears throat> Pretty good discipline. She's not completely out of control. Yeah. She's clocking. She's just excited. That's good. We try to do this. Ah. Place. This is what we try to do before going on walks with her. Like kind of like what Down. we talked about last time. Down. Um, I try to put her in her bed and then I like refill her tea bag, huh. but she starts doing this type of stuff. <clears throat> Ready. Yeah. Oof. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's go. Place. Yeah. Very good. Ah. Very good. Down. Would you like to try? Probably should. <laughs> <laughs> now, if she breaks... She's really smart. So when she, you just have to, did you ever play Mario as a kid? Yeah. The whole concept of that game is like you're navigating the stage. You fuck up. You start over. It looks the same way so you can figure out how not to fuck up. Yeah. Dog training is the same way. So when I place her in a down and I walk back and she breaks, I want to help her understand that she ah, fell down the cavern, yeah. right? Mario starts in the beginning of the stage and it looks the exact same way. So she can figure out where she fucked up and not fall down the cavern. <clears throat> Come. Sit. Ready. Get it. Oof. Very good. Walk over to the crate of the uh, cot. Help her out. Place. Let's go. Place. There you go. Out. Ah, ice. good, down. <laughs> this has got a hole in it. I don't think she minds. <laughs> You're probably used to her slobber out, I imagine. There's your squeak. Your squeak is only going to help you if she's having a hard time. The way I communicate to her when I'm going, ice, it's distinct. I want her to understand that's what that sound means. Yeah. And I'll even, if she's still not getting it, she's gnawing on it. I make a sound that says, hey, I want you to stop gnawing on it now. Ah, it, it, it's just a way of communicating. Yeah, I started doing that a little bit more with her. Yeah, yeah. Her yeah. Um, especially when like, I kind of do like that. Yeah. And she starts to kind of like pull back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's the name of the game. You're just going to practice, okay? okay? And this is about you getting comfortable with it too. So don't feel any pressure. I will, I'll pull that off to the side so you don't have to like <laughs> work in front of however many people are in there. But but I just want you to have fun with it, okay? Please. Very good. Remember, sound and movement together makes you compelling. Come. Sit. Good. Place. Good. Down. She's just responding to my movement. Let me show you. Pineapple. Orange. Cucumber. Apple. See what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a dance. All right. Dad's got the ball. I'll sit down so she knows I'm not playing. Actually, I'll grab her leash. I got some boys coming up. Yeah, let me get it. Thanks for reminding me. Let me get a fresh ball, water, water. Hold her tight. I got some kids coming. She definitely needed that. Thanks, Mom. Appreciate you reminding me. And, and remember, <clears throat> this is your fucking time. Right? Keep her on the leash until he comes inside. <clears throat> this is your time to shine. 
staffies and pitties and bullies and bull terriers have to fucking hibernate in the spring and the summer, right? We got to keep them calm and, and cool. This is their time to be fucking crackheads. Go. Winter is your time. Sucks for you. You're freezing your yeah. butt. For them, it's it's perfect. <clears throat> <laughs> That's good. That's dry. You want that? Very good. <laughs> Very good. Take a walk back. Get ready. When she breaks, what does it sound like when dad wasn't want me to break? Is the sound that you're going to make. Right? And then reset. It's okay if she breaks. There's an X amount of repetitions there where she gets it and it stops, right? So you're, she's owed those mistakes so she can understand that dad's playing the same game and I don't get the ball if I break. So go ahead and walk back. There you go. Wait for her to break. If she doesn't, give it a three-second duration and ask for a recall. There you go. Good job, dad. Okay. Very good. Ready? Get her eyes dilating. There it is. Get it. That's what you want. Good. Visually. See that? Very good job, Dad. See that? So pick your moment. Take your time. Gesture. Place. If, if the you're, gesture, yeah. She wasn't doing it, and then as soon as I did that, exactly. There. Fast twitch movements from you create fast twitch movements from them. Yeah. There is, I got to be honest with you, there is a very similar, and animals that are perceiving the world and pursuing. When I'm doing dynamic lure and reward, there is not much difference between chasing the ball and chasing me, and that's how I get dogs ball obsessed to begin with. Is and they're chasing me around, and then I transpose it to the ball and throw the ball, and now they're chasing the ball but they're still pursuing you because they're visual. Take your moment. Your sound is just to compliment your movement. Later, you can fade the movement. Later, when you say place, she'll run back to place with a little bit of practice. Like yeah, but for now, take your moment. If she's not looking at you <clears throat> and she's like on the ground looking that way, then you're gonna wanna time it out to when she looks at you. You can even squeak the ball so she kind of looks up at you and then boom, that's your moment to make the movements. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> Good job. Fantastic. Good catch. Good timing. Very good. There you go. She added it. Yeah, she added it. Very good. And she's like, where'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Dad. No, she outed it. Grab it. That was perfect. She came to you. She outed it because she wanted to continue with the ball game. So that same concept, just because this is going to be important for you to remember because you're still going to be working the out when you go home, that same concept, go grab like a, doesn't matter, grab one of those second balls that squeaks a little bit. Those are Pet Food Express. You can go grab those. But when she runs up to you, I want you to throw that ball down and squeak, and I want you to say out at the same time that you squeak it. So she's running up to you, and you go out, and you squeak, and she'll release the ball because she sees that ball, and you're helping her out. And now you're conditioning a running up to you and outing at your feet, all with the visual component to what you're doing. <clears throat> there you go. What does the sound? What does the no payment marker sound like from Dad? So practice that, right? I, something. It should sound different, like almost like you got the wrong answer on a game show. I, so she goes, "Ah, oh, fuck, got it," and she resets. Bonus points. And I was saying this last night in my webinar. When I go to install like a no payment marker, 
my goal is to not only help the dog understand what you did is a mistake and it's not leading to the reward, but I want to reset the dog too. Oftentimes when I go to install a no payment marker, I'll walk backwards and stand there and I'll raise the criteria too high, too fast. I want them to break so that I can try to reset them with my movement and my sound. Ah! And if you catch it because you're waiting for it, they'll reset. And now your no payment marker gets them to reset and you'll even start backpedaling onto the cot and resetting. And that's a more efficient no payment marker because it catches the rep quickly. I <clears throat> Good. Now, when you're resetting, make sure that this is an important thing too. When they break, don't be too excited with the reset. Because if you're ever like, hey, oh, 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 for them, those are all like, we're still doing a thing, right? The game is still on. You want them to get the impression the game is over. Ah, let's go. This tone is out. Game over. Ah, let's go. Almost, and I hate, I'm like on a Mario roll today, but. The sound that happens when you fall down the guy, right? Like you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I died, right? Same thing. You want it to sound like game is stopped. That's not what we wanted. That makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. <Okay. clears throat> good job. Very good. Good job. Fantastic. Get ready for that. You're going to out her on the place? Please. Good. Ah, uh, uh, ouch. Yes. Good. Very good. Good yeah. job. Get better. She's getting better, and she's worked a lot. Getting better. Yeah, you're getting better, and she's put in a lot of work. What time is it? Twelve till. Okay, let's give her a little bit of a cool down time. Cause sure, she's that tongue's going. Let's even get her a little bit of water. She's been going. Balls to the wall for a minute. There you go. She's now she's like performing the drink. Got it. Drink. <laughs> Good job, Dad. Let's give her some cool down time. Balls disappear. You can go. You can give them to me. You, we'll give her a cool down time. I don't want to completely, because she's giving us like 50 straight minutes of work. Yeah. And then uh, see if you can give her some compression pets and reassurance. There you go. Just calm her down. Relax down. There you go. When you activate the when you're performing a when you're working a dog like this um you do in terms of the pursuit element hey dude whoever you are you're not going fucking live chill <clears throat> not only are you getting that predatory sequence area of the brain the hypothalamus circuits and limbic systems activate there because she's pursuing like it's prey you're also activating five regions of the brain referred to as the salience network. The salience network's job is to switch between stimuli, to move your ability to observe, right? And in the environment, it would be like cranking her with a game of fetch and her being like, and you see it a lot, bird, car, kid. <clears throat> but when you go to harness that, switching between stimuli is switching between task. Come, sit, spin, place. That's the salience network at play. But when you stop training the dog, that thing is still going. It's like a turbine. So there is a bit of a cool down period. So don't be surprised if you go to stop her train in the game and she's like, ball, this, that's just the turb. That's the salience network still engaged. So there's a bit of uh, calming her down and helping her kind of downshift a little bit. Just giving her heavy pets like this. Whatever it is, you'll, you'll find the unlock. You'll find the unlock. Yeah. Compression pets definitely ground them. You know, placing her on a cot, a loose cot like that, forces a, a relax down. This is why I have it, comparative to that cot. Because there's a lot of give in the cot, they have yeah. to give you a relax down when they lay down, which sets my raises my likelihood that I can get downstays from dogs. Okay. Yeah. She's great. 
He's a very talented dog. Very talented. And the fact that she can do those disciplined downstays either means you guys have been practicing a lot of those weight games and she gets it, or she's a little bit more in control with that excitability than we previously thought. Yeah, I think I think every time we see you, I feel like I, I mentioned this, like a lot of these things are things that we're doing, but you help give us these techniques to Yeah, for a result, it. yeah. Like what we're doing is a little too... I don't know what you want to call it. It's not quite getting there. Okay. <laughs> and then this helps push it to the next level. Sure. Which we're struggling to do. Yeah. Yeah, we have some of these things, but this is obviously kicking it into gear. Yeah. Like reinforcing it for the next level. You feel comfortable with the out techniques? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, remember, like, when you go to practice this, you know, I remember I started off with just tossing it in the air. She's not breaking her attention for me and taking off across the garage. We didn't start with too much excitement because I want to teach yeah. her the concept of outing gets the ball quicker. And so a little bit lower arous uh, lower excitement, yeah. get it out. And once you get to, into a rhythm, go for it. But don't underestimate the control that you put in between. If you are throwing a tennis ball and you're trying to work the out and it's just ball and you're, the dog is having a hard time listening to you as the, ball is, the dog is gnashing at the ball and really excited to gnash at the ball, you haven't really cemented the idea that there's a lot of control and a lot of listening to dad involved in this pattern. Yeah. Really spruce up the come, sit, spin, yeah. sit. Yeah. So she go, so she's listening to you the whole time. <clears throat> and then that will segue into her listening to you when you give the out cue that you're working on. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then don't give her any, she has no balls minus the training, right? No access to balls minus the training. No, we put them away. Perfect. Yeah.